In this section, we're going to be looking at sinus lock and sinus arrest at the same time. And that's because they're very similar in appearance with one minor detail. It's actually kind of a big detail, but we're going to talk about that in a second. I want to just paint a picture first of all. Have you ever had to throw sandbags? You've gone out to help somebody flood proof their house and you're in a human chain. One person is tossing, the next person hands it and tosses it to the next. So there's this continual stimulus of sandbags coming at you. And this is the same way as the SA node. It's continually sending a signal down to the AV node to transport that to the ventricles. In a sinus block, think of this like a football, the SA node still fires, so that person still throws the sandbag, but it's blocked from getting to the next person. Something prevents it from even going forward, it drops in midair. Maybe it was a weak toss, boom, it didn't make it to its intended target. So what you're gonna see in the waveform is that there is a predictable pattern that we're gonna march, we call it marching out, I'll explain that in a second. In sinus arrest, also known as sinus pause, the SA node does not fire. And this can be a real short duration or it can be a long duration, which becomes more troublesome because we have no cardiac output. But it's almost like, you know, we've had the SA node fire, 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 squirrel, what's going on over there? Oh yeah, okay, I'll come back to work now. Fire, 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 squirrel. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take care of that in a minute. I gotta get back to my work here. Fire, fire, fire. So the SA node does not send a signal in the sinus arrest. And in the sinus block, the SA node does send a signal, but it stopped from getting where it needs to go. And then the next signal gets through. Let's take a look at those in waveforms. Okay, so sinus block and sinus arrest. So we'll start by looking at the sinus block rhythm. On the screen here, what we can see is a real identifiable regular pattern, but it's got this gap. Now we've seen a gap like this before in sinus arrhythmias, respiratory sinus arrhythmias, and non-respiratory sinus arrhythmias. But there's a difference here in that it marches out. And what does marching out mean? I'm gonna show you in another picture here. On the bottom screen, at the bottom of the screen here, I have these blue arrows annotating where the P wave should be. So if it were to be consistent and regular as we measure in our eight step analysis, I would expect a P wave to show up right here, but it's missing. So where would my next one be? I would expect the next one to be right here and it picks up. So this is a characteristic feature of a sinus block is that it marches out, but we're just missing one complex. So you see if there's no P wave, there can be no QRS wave. And these blue lines just represent the entire um, P wave to T wave complex and how that all marches out. So one of the most common causes here is vagal tone, people holding their breath, they're straining while they're trying to have a bowel movement. And that can cause the SA node to just kind of reset. It's gonna send it, but it gets blocked as soon as they bear down. I liken this to the sandbags, right? So this is guy, the guy tossed the sandbag, but it was a weak toss and it failed. Next one's coming, be ready. So when we compare this to normal sinus rhythm, you can see quite obviously that there is a long pause there that would not be seen in normal sinus rhythm. However, if we don't do our analysis, we don't know what we have. This could be a sinus arrhythmia. This could be an AV block. This could be a ventricle block. So let's just take a look at this in more detail. When we come to our parameters, everything is normal except that missing QRS complex. So our rhythm is regular minus this one spot. So you could interpret this as regular with a missing complex. The rate will be within 60 to 100. They should be the same. P waves are round and upright because the SA node is working. That's not the problem. PR interval between 0 0.2, 0 0.12 and 0.2 seconds. The QRS is between 0 0.06 and 0.12 seconds. QT is normal, 0.36 to 0.44 seconds. But here's the thing, one or more PQRSD complexes, the entire thing's missing. Just because it sent the signal, it got stopped before it traveled down those internodal pathways and got to the AV node. So something blocked it right after it was fired. So the P wave will not be visible. 
In terms of sinus arrest, this is that guy who's standing in the middle of the line, decides, I'm not taking anymore, I need a break. And everybody's waiting and waiting and waiting, and he's taking a nice long drink. Oh, so good. And then he decides, all right, let's get back to work. Okay. The, the waveforms do not march out. You would not expect to find that this marches out and you would have a regular rhythm in its absence. This can be anywhere from a few seconds, seven seconds, longer, but the longer it goes, the less cardiac output we have, the more dangerous it becomes. You do wanna count this in seconds though. You wanna note from when it started to when it ended, how many seconds is that pause or arrest? Now the P wave that comes back after a sinus pause may or may not be round and upright. Now, if you recall back to an earlier module, we talked about the intrinsic firing rate of the SA node is 60 to 100. It can go slower, bradycardia. It can go faster, tachycardia. We also have the intrinsic firing rate of the AV node, which we're going to talk about in module or in level two of the ECG in more depth. But we did talk about that in our earlier module and that its intrinsic firing rate is 40 to 60. And then the Purkinje fiber is 15 to 40, something around those, depending on your books. So the P waves will look different if our backup generators have taken over. It will not be round and upright. And that's how we know this particular impulse is from the SA node because it is round and upright. When we look at a sinus block versus a sinus arrest, that key feature is that it does not march out. It's an undetermined amount of time in a sinus arrest and then it picks up into its rhythm post. Okay, so again, looking at our parameters for a sinus arrest, everything is normal with the exception of that P wave post resumption of electrical activity may or may not be round and upright. It could look different. And that that pause is longer than two seconds. And we wanna, we wanna count how long that is. So you count how many boxes and do your math. Treatment is not usually indicated unless they become symptomatic. And if you recall from our bratty patients, these are patients who are not getting enough cardiac output, same thing happens here. We will see signs and symptoms of decreased cardiac output. They may be a little bit more sudden and or severe depending on how long that block is because it eventually turns into a cardiac, like where the heart is stopped, nothing's happening. So they could become pulseless. A cardiac arrest is different than a sinus arrest. That's what I was trying to say. I knew I was going somewhere with that. All right, so diagnosing the causes of sinus pause is the same as every other, every other arrhythmia. We need to look at their history. We need to look at their lab works. We're gonna do a, a physical exam. We may be looking to see if they have some past heart disease, fibrotic heart disease tissue is one of them. What medications are they on? Because if they're on an antiarrhythmic, that might be the cause, and then we're going to adjust that dose. So we really want to identify the cause to treat it. So here's our PACED algorithm. You're going to hear this one a lot over the level one and level two ECG. Remember, P stands for PACE. We need to, if they're symptomatic, put electric, electricity through them to stimulate the heart to beat more often. We are going to give atropine. Atropine is the medication that will also increase our heart rate. We will consider epinephrine and dopamine, those alpha-1, beta-1, and beta-2 receptors um, that will increase contractility, blood pressure, heart rate. So it's the same as bradycardia. So now it's time to do some practice. We've covered a lot of different strips, a lot of different abnormalities for the sinus node only. So in your booklet, you've got a test your knowledge, case studies, Go ahead and do all those analysis. Your answers are in the back and I will see you after that.